make 2020 fantastic. Come to Aircon, 13th to the 15th of March, and you can meet some fantastic people, play some fantastic games. Just everything is going to be fantastic. You can get your tickets now by going to aircon.co.uk forward slash tickets or by following the links in the show notes. And now, on with the show. Welcome to another episode of We're Not Wizards. My name's Richard. I'll be your host for January. Because it's January. Because everybody's really happy at this time of the year, aren't they? At this point of the month, aren't they? You know, but so in order to make you all happy, and this is me providing a service to you, I decided to go into the bright side, the happy side, the joyous side of the internet. And I dragged cricking, kicking and screaming from that part of the internet. Um, a person you could say is um, a little bit of fun. A person who is not afraid to dress up in a onesie looking like a parrot. They're not afraid to juggle boxes. They're not afraid to put wacky little videos on the internet for everybody's pleasure. Um, I bring you the one, the only, Emma Zaja. <laughs> Anyway. Hi. 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 I tried so hard not to burst into laughter while you were describing everything. That's pretty good. I'm quite glad, kind of glad you did that because these these intros they can't be repeated. Because every time I do an intro, I've got to do a completely new one. I can't just repeat the same intro because then it misses up the kind of the the kind of the spontaneity and the nonsense and the energy. And I, anyway, to beside the point, how are you doing? How are you well? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for having me. I mean, <laughs> I hope well, it's going to be a, a good mm, time. I uh, well, we'll see because you know I kind of I um I've kind of been following your kind of your various work that you do which is basically you kind of just doing any random kind of entertaining and fun thing and then putting it on the internet for everybody to enjoy. So we're going to get into that because I want to, I think it's only, I think it's worthwhile <laughs> to talk a little bit about that. But obviously the first thing that everybody is dying to find out is what you've been playing lately, I guess is the first what? question. What I've have you been, been playing... managing to get to the table? Not a lot, because I started my new job in December, mm-hmm. and it comes with a quite long commute, and mm-hmm. that, and then I decided to put more content online for some reason. So the only <laughs> game we've been playing lately is Clank Legacy. All right, okay. Yeah. I've been hearing a lot about, I played Clank, I played Clank, um, I think I played Clank a couple of times. And it was entertaining. It was fun. Um, I've not gone as far as even looking at kind of legacy. So is it a proper kind of legacy game? Are you like ripping up cards and putting stickers on the board and and things like that? Oh, yes, definitely. So many stickers, sheets, (laughs) like eight to... Yeah, no, I'm not going to spoil anything, but like a lot of sticker sheets. And you got a box... Uh, like a cardporium with over 170 cards, I think, in it. And wow. those will involve contracts that you have to tear up if you uh-huh. complete or don't complete them. And it's just, yeah, there's a lot of reading and administration involved or surrounding the game. Yeah. So you have the, 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 the introduction text and then you have to maybe get some stickers out of a sheet or have to... Yeah, there's there's a lot of go- things going on, but it's not as stressful as other legacy games I've played. So it's it's 
it's a long journey to play a game, but it's mm. worthwhile. Have you played like the Pandemic Legacy games then as well? Then before uh, only season one, and we I, I kind of stopped playing that because I got too stressed out playing. Really? <laughs> I was like, just running about the apartment, going, "Nobody else can die." And I like, "Nobody else should die." <laughs> yes, please basically. don't let them die. <laughs> oh, we've got to march, and it's all gone apart. Oh no! Can I? Uh, we had like a perfect first month, and then hmm. things started happening, and I was like, "Oh, but I don't want to <laughs> mess this board up." And I, we we cannot destroy legacy bits, so we always put them underneath the insert <laughs> so like you, the pandemic you, don't tear, you just... don't tear them up then you don't like rip them no with costal i must admit i'd be the same because i would be worried the only the, the thing i'm worried about legacy games is my own um competence in playing them in that i would be the type of person i'm, I'm generally i have been the type of person in the past that even in a non-legacy game I've played a game like two or three times and then somebody's come along after me and went, you do realise that you're not meant to do that in the rules. Um, <laughs> it happened. I think the best thing happened was, um, and the most embarrassing thing happened was, I think it was Viticulture, when you know how you put out your f- <laughs> you put out your fields of grapes, vin- yeah. vines to grow. Yeah. And I kind of misread the rule wrong. So every time I kind of produced grapes I was also removing the card off the field as well and I was wondering how I could never ever get enough grapes to put the wine together until my one of my um, children at the time kind of was looking I just want to check this rule this doesn't seem right and they said you've been playing it wrong so um, I felt stupid so I, that's gone on. I mean, I, I had the same idea Well, when we played last. I was like, oh, wait, do we have to remove these after making the wine? And mm-hmm. um, so you're you're not the only one who thinks It just that. wasn't. Yeah. And then somebody, you know, and then I, I kind of checked. And people were like, yeah, I wondered about that, how you're meant to. Because obviously you, you move the you move the, the beads down the track and, and, you know, to represent as you're growing kind of like the grapes and stuff like that. And I was always wondering, why am I... Why am I going through a season and not able to grow enough grapes in order to get the in order to get the wine kind of going? But now it kind of makes sense, and at the same time, I prove myself to be um, a kind of like a complete idiot. So that's <laughs> a little bit of a sidestep, but that's one that kind of makes me worried about playing legacy games, which is why I would probably do what you do. Which is to slip, yeah, <laughs> slip like the, the card. Except with Clank Legacy, you kind of mm. have to use all the stickers because it's basically necessary for the game. So you you cannot not do that. So, <laughs> but tearing up cards that would just break my heart. Like hear that ripping sound. It would feel good if it's a game I don't like. So maybe if we finish Pandemic, I will just. Rip up all the cards, <laughs> even though we don't have to. That's why. That's why I want them to do a terraforming Mars <laughs> legacy game. Just except yeah, you can make your own that. terraforming. I, just don't, I would just open, I would just open the box and just start <laughs> ripping, yeah. ripping the cards, just ripping them, recording me ripping them on video and also not no, going. Tsh, 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 tsh. If you play the game, yet, no. Still not played. Yeah, that kind of thing. We go right up to the the microphone and go. I'm going to rip some cards today. Join me. That that kind of that kind of um, that kind of nonsense. So, do you still? Because people, I know a lot of people. Once they get into legacy games, they really really like them and they kind of look around. You know, you you played kind of pandemic. Have you got other games that you've been playing recently? Are you kind of like, I'm kind of enjoying the legacy kind of clank stuff and I'm just kind of sticking with that for just now? Well, we're almost through with the the game. So we're almost finished. Wow. Because <laughs> it's been one of the... I I keep saying, oh, I want to play clank because it's, it's, nice it's a nice feeling game, but also light enough for me to not think too much. Mm-hmm. But I just received Isle of Cats today. So I'm... Did you? 
Yes, so I'm really excited to open that up. And I haven't even punched anything because I came home, I had dinner, sat down and have this lovely chat. So <laughs> so what you're doing is you're blaming me for, for not, not allowing being able. <laughs> not allowing yourself to even start punching. I mean, if you we wanted to... We could do to, like an ASMR episode you right could now. Do it right yeah. now. I mean, you could just go and get the board game and start punching okay, it me, out while uh, you're... While you're talking, just... you don't. She's <laughs> away. They're away. They've gone. They're not coming back until they get there. <laughs> it's like no, you're not meant to punch the Isle of Isle of Cats game, um, <laughs> away from the microphone because otherwise I'm just left here talking like a spare muppet. Um, <clears throat> I, I know Frank quite well. I've known Frank. You know Frank is. Um, He's a lovely guy, and I'm I'm absolutely delighted with all the success he's has, and uh, I <laughs> I did um, I did remember posting on the Isle of Cats Facebook group just saying dogs are better, and <laughs> <laughs> so people took it really really seriously. Like I'd like you know I'd besmirched their cats, like I'd gone into their house and you know flicked their actual cat on the. On the nose. Well, I have been enjoying it. I don't know if you've been if you've been seeing it. If you've if you're on the Facebook group, is if you've seen um, the various pictures of cats inside the lids of boxes of Isle of Cats. I, I don't think know he's if you've been seen posting them pictures. on Twitter as well, because I've yes. seen some pictures of them. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I literally I came home and I knew the package was going to be here, and I was like, uh. okay, I'm gonna do an unboxing video. Mm-hmm. But then jump cut into having an actual cat in the box and missing out on the aisle. But I Why, <laughs> messed up but the recording. You so you're just did. ruining it. Have you got a cat? The jump cut didn't work. Because so. <laughs> <laughs> probably the cat jumped out the box. Have you got a cat? I got two cats. Oh, have you? What are yes. they called? Sparky and Zeus. So lightning themed lightning themed kind of no, one no, of them is they a god already had their they're... names uh, when we adopted them so. oh right oh like rescue rescue cats then yeah so you got them from a, like a rescue center that's pretty cool that's pretty yeah, cool yeah they, they, there weren't I've... like like um what do you mean uh say like living on the streets they had a previous no. owner but they she couldn't take care of them anymore so we actually met her while we picked them up because we oh, wow. went, went over to look at them and she uh-huh. was. Uh, we said, "Oh, we're looking. Uh, we're coming here to look at Sparky and Zeus." And then the lady next to us started crying because she was going, <gasps> she was there to say goodbye to them. It was so heartbreaking. Did you not turn around and go? And we're going to take a lot better care of them than you did. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> they're going to have their own bed. We're going to treat these. We're going to treat them like, you know, like they're our own children. Basically, ha ha ha. I. I wouldn't have done that. That would have been quite nasty. <laughs> no, I can imagine she, kind of like... you was already have... crying, Richard. Come on. Oh, my goodness. You might... Well, I mean, you can go for the actual breathing sobs. You know, the ones where they go... <laughs> <laughs> but she was close already. <laughs> the kind of... Almost a kind of close to having some kind of asthma attack going on. That sounds really, really cool. And it's actually displaying some of my my real character. But... Um, <laughs> I guess. So there you go. <laughs> so... Is it quite, is the Isle of Cats, it sounds like the Isle of Cats box is a serious size of a box. It I is mean, it sounds uh, like quite it's, big, yeah. It's a, is it? Are you still not opened it's, it? Yeah, I opened it very, like, I, I lifted up the lid, I touched mm-hmm. the cloth bag, and I <laughs> touched the meeples, and then I had to have dinner. Yes. <laughs> so I had to put it all back. Because you had to speak yeah. to some idiot on the end of a... On the end of a phone. I mean, for... I never said idiot, so... I did. I mean, yeah. let's face it, you're all thinking it out there as well, you gorgeous people. Um, I think they, any... they would think I'm the idiot idiot in this case. I, so. I, I think that um, we'll have a vote at the end. Yeah. And we'll see what the audience say. I think is the best thing. We'll do like a poll on Twitter. <laughs> and we'll say, okay, <laughs> who's, the, who's the bigger... Who's the bigger... In this episode... Who's the bigger idiot? And then we'll see. We'll see kind of what uh, 
what kind of people say. Are you? Um, is there anything else you're looking? I mean, obviously, with time being quite short in terms of your day, um, yeah. Is there games that you're kind of you're keeping your eye on that you'd like to get your hands on over the next couple of months that you've seen? Ooh, that's a tough one. Because well, I never said it was going to be easy questions. No, I no, you never. You, you, I said, do I have to prepare anything? You were like, no, no, it's it's no, it's, it's going to take a while before we're even having just a chat. chat. I I sent him this question last week. Yep. Like, hey, can I prepare anything? No, no, no it's it's no. <laughs> no. So, uh, any games I have my eye on? I not. Really, at the moment, there's a lot of games I have my eye on because I'm surrounded by games twenty four seven now. Exactly. With exactly. my new job, but uh, that's more like, oh, I still wanted that game, and now I can buy that. And basically, that's, right. that's <laughs> yeah. But having access, having access to kind of like money and having access to the funds, do you end up like drawing a huge list of games? That you then want to own because I know of um, there's that double edged sword where you then have a little bit of extra money so you can go ahead and buy games but then you buy in a pile of games and then um, you end up not playing them for ages I mean I got um, I asked for um, because my birthday is quite near to Christmas I asked for some expansions to like Arkham Horror and um, I've still not played <laughs> got my expansions and I was like yeah, yeah I got my expansions and then I was like I really 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 need to sit down and play the ba- <laughs> play the base game because I I have I've not even touched the the base game um I am terrible about in getting there I keep um I keep um checking out the stuff that um Ian McAllister from the Giant Brains done because he's done a lot of kind of guides and stuff like that on how to play it and they're deadly helpful and I kind of like go Right, I'm definitely getting that, getting this to the table, and I'm definitely gonna and 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 Paul Grogan does like uh, run throughs, guides, and stuff. And there's a whole ton of it's like it's not like there's no content on how to play this game. <laughs> I just physically haven't kind of got it to the table, which is quite um, it's quite quite sad to be perfectly honest. Um, I I did think of a. I I still want really want to get unmatched so bad. Unmatched is so good. Really? Yeah, I really liked it. I'm not played. So I want. I've not played it. I've not had a chance to even look at it. But there's so many. Is it not? Is it not one of these games where it's like um, there's so many different kind of packs and components and stuff like that as well. It's like you can get different kind of figures and. Yeah, you and can stuff like that. get like the Robin Hood versus Bigfoot uh, separately from wow. the the normal pack, and you can uh-huh. combine them. But I th- I th- I'm really would like the Sherlock one they're coming out with soon. Oh, yeah, Sherlock Holmes so fan. I think it's Sherlock Holmes, Jack the Ripper, Invisible Man, and another oh. person. Well, that would be cool. Because it just basically it puts different people against different people, doesn't it? So you've got like Alice of Wonderland can be up against like the Medusa. Yeah, that's yeah, like that. that's in the makes... in the basic pack. Yeah. All oh, right. Okay. When did you play it? Uh, I played it in November in Berlin with Kelvin when we stayed at Pierre's house. Oh, okay. Yes. It was a good fun. It sounds it like you enjoyed so it. It was so much fun. I yeah I. <laughs> I beat him. Uh, I I've told yeah. the story so many times already, but I beat Kelvin's Jabberwocky in the first turn because I had such luck with my uh, cards, and uh-huh. he played a lower defense card, so his Jabberwocky was all gone <laughs> after the first wow. turn. <laughs> yeah, he would have been delighted with that. Then he would have been absolutely. He was like so oh, happy. I <laughs> underestimated this. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Guess I'll go home now. <laughs> thanks for <laughs> thanks for that. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, you said you thought a game. I was jumping. Out. I was going to say. I was asking another question, but um, you know, I really should. Yeah, if we have a big collection, right? Yes. Yes. Well, um, 
I see my partner's collection as my, uh, part of my collection because <laughs> we live together, and uh, I think right. that's that makes us makes it our collection. He has a lot of games. I gathered some games, but he's the one that buys most of them. So yeah, I have a lot of unplayed games because I just entered the relationship with <laughs> maybe one or two games and <laughs> gained a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> instantly it's like what what first attracted you to the multiple board game collector <laughs> <laughs> i mean you, you have to have at least more board games than i do <laughs> no i'm just kidding <laughs> it's like ah oh, he's a keeper <laughs> <laughs> definitely yeah. but does that th- is that kind of part of your kind of your relaxing routine then that you say oh let's you know if nothing exciting's on the tv um yeah we play board games then, just play yeah. board games that sounds amazing because we're kind of i'm quite kind of quite old so there's still that kind of i've got so much to watch on catch up on like netflix and amazon and then i've got games to play and i've got the two sides of games to play i've got the games i've got to play um to look at and comment on and then I've got games I've got to play which I just want to play <laughs> for the sake of them and I'm just thinking hmm I need a different job <laughs> or, or or I need to get into crime so I can just spend my days kind of you know um, kind of earning money lots and lots of money and <laughs> yet have plenty of time to kind of play board games which would be kind of um, of nice um so did you were you always kind of in were you always involved kind of in the hobby before you met your partner then with his stunning collection of <laughs> carp Yeah um I played board game board games as a kid with my parents mm. were for I yeah more forced like to play board games cuz <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're gonna play a game now you have to participate so no but we right. played games uh like bonanza or mm. uh, Tichu or uh, uh, citadels we brought that along on holidays mm. when we would go camping so yeah <laughs> i and acquire as a kid i don't know i i have a picture of me as a child with i wasn't playing acquire as a game but playing with the little hotel figures but oh yeah I played it as a, I think, pretty young child <laughs> acquire, mm-hmm. and that's not really what I'd suspect it's, if I look back now, right? It's not probably entirely gateway or kind of introduction. <laughs> I mean, you could have been an advanced child. I mean, you might have looked at the rules and went, this is easy. Look, douche, 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 and win. Yeah, maybe. Kind of thing. It might be one of those things at the at the time. Did you, um, did you keep your interest in tabletop then or did you do what a lot of people do which is to drift away and then come back in again i definitely drifted away (laughs) but i'm a big drifter i drift to a lot of things (laughs) because i then went full into uh, i don't want to (laughs) know i uh, did some like uh video editing uh on a saturday after school for a Uh while so i learned how to edit videos shoot videos so i made a lot of horrible videos back then as well <laughs> so uh, that took my interest and i was like oh maybe i want to study uh, a video but i was like oh i'm scared of making uh, my hobby my job so i st- uh, started studying communication all right and uh back then i was full into video games so i could uh in this study, you can choose like uh, different paths you can go to. So it was yeah. like movies or video games or events. All right. So I did movies and video games and then ended up doing my final internship at a board game company because I was like, oh, I kind of want to combine the physical game. I did research uh, on uh, purchase intention of uh, board game applications. So what makes people buy board game applications? Wow. For that company, yeah. So to combine the, the the digital aspect of the board games with the like the 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 fiscal aspect. So. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Wow, <laughs> this has gone down a path I did not expect it to be going down. Then, um, <laughs> what kind of video games were you in? Then you said you were into video games in a big way. So what what were you kind of your favorite 
kind of games you used to play? I love Portal, so That's I played a, a lot of Portal, and um, back then I played a lot of League of Legends with my friends, because you would just spend the night ch- yeah. chatting on Skype and playing game online. Yeah. But also Civilization, I've played a lot. And Such a classic. Yeah. I remember spending just literally days of my life kind of um, playing Civilization. I used to play Civilization on the PlayStation, the original kind of little play yeah. PS, PS1, it was called, but they called it um, P-Zone or something. It was like the, the really, really small, smaller version. And I remember playing it on that, and I remember it got to the point where I had my... Um, I was the empire that I built was so big that it it literally took like five ten minutes for kind of the, like the PlayStation to actually catch up. Um, every time I changed a t- every time I did a turn, I just left to sit there and just wait while it kind of went through all the various different moves. So it kind of like it kind of like took ages and ages and ages. But it was so lovely those ages. It- it was nice because it wasn't like you could just put the controller down and you could go for like a 10 mile hike <laughs> to be honest you could go for, go for a walk you could go out for dinner you could go and run about the garden if you really really want and then you could come back and it just it was still halfway through kind of loading what it was going to be doing for the kind of like the next the next kind of age um so you're doing your you're doing your in, you're doing your um kind of your your work placement internship and you did your study was that for your degree then the kind of the study that you did on board game application acquisition yeah that was like my graduation uh wow. project mm-hmm. like thesis uh kind of but uh, my final graduation project uh my assessment was uh you had to present like an experience in which you would prove all your uh Things, all the things you've learned, and I created a a, a board game for that. <laughs> so I tried to. Uh, I made it a pirate theme because um, I developed because some. Uh, yeah, I mean, pirates, pirates. Uh, it's it's same thing. It's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> no, I have like uh, during the second year of your study, you had to present yourself as a concept, and I did a whole pirate theme. That's where it kind of went off with the parrot obsession again. Uh, <laughs> so I thought, like, the parrot, it's the pirate's companion. So if I I graduated now with my parrot companion, but I am now the pirate for some reason. And I made, like, a whole... I put on... There was five islands, and the, the, the fifth island was hidden underneath a lantern, and they had to enter the islands for cards with... The information about the things I did. So the the gameplay was horrible, but the experience was <laughs> good enough. <laughs> was it a legacy game? Did people start ripping it up? I mean, I did in, <laughs> in the, the end. end. It. It's all gone now. <laughs> is it? Did you? No, not I keep still it? have the cards, but the, the the board is gone. Really? Is that a regret yeah. that you kind of the board is away? Yeah. You didn't destroy um, the board, though, did you? You didn't like kind of go. I'm glad I'm got rid of this. This is rubbish. This game. No, it, it was. I didn't have any more space for it. All right. Okay. It was just <laughs> like fair. printed out a like paper on a, an uh-huh. old cardboard uh, All board. Right. I don't even remember which game it was. All right. Well, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Yeah. Did so when you finished your studies, were you actively looking for a job within? the kind of the video game, board game type space then? Because that sounds like you were fairly yeah. focused on kind of like tabletop and, and video games. Yeah, and I my first job was in video games as well. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, what, what I, I, I started customer support at a, a, a game company and that evolved with some content management. So that basically, I did that for a year, I think, and then... Mm-hmm. Uh, I my contract didn't get uh, renewed, so I was out of a job <laughs> after that. Wow, um, that sucked. But and then I spent like half a year applying for all the jobs I could and mm-hmm. getting rejected because I had had basically no experience. Because customer support, yeah, it's not the experience you needed for a communication job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And then I, I worked at the post office, just uh, sorting mail because I had to do something. I was <laughs> going crazy yeah. in the meantime. Yeah, yeah. And then I ended up at another video game company at the end. And I did uh, some sales and marketing there. And now I'm at a board game company doing marketing. So that's all right. Yeah. I take it you're not. I take it you're not naming the company. No. Uh, yeah, we'll a lot of people secret. know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm All here right, okay, for well. me, not for my company. <laughs> exactly. I'm not not representing the company, not yet. No. Anyway, <laughs> if it changes and they're kind of like doing their latest game, you'll be tapping me on the shoulder and asking if you can come back on to talk a little bit about <laughs> kind of here's the, the new, new Kickstarter. Game <laughs> it's a new Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I get it's people asking to come on and talk about their Kickstarter it's pretty it's not great I don't mind it's actually good fun it's always like you know it's speaking to I people I could talk about it. a Kickstarter and then just make one just for this show but we could do <laughs> we could do what's, what's no. <laughs> what game would it be though I'm no, kind of intrigued now it would be for a podcast now. I think yeah maybe or a just parrot, a parrot game you just could, me uh, can... making content. I mean, if the Dice Tower can kickstart a season of content, then I could maybe try. <laughs> Let's talk about the content. Because you you kind of came from nowhere to kind of just regularly churning out, producing these little bit of content, whether it be like little videos or just a fo- just general... Little pieces of content, content here, there, and everywhere. Was it a conscious decision to do that? Did you just get up one morning and you went, "Today, <laughs> today is the day I start." <laughs> today is the day. Exactly. <laughs> I shall show them my wares. Or was there a particular? <laughs> don't mean. This. Was there a particular point you kind of went? No, I'm actually. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna put something up there and see what happens. Uh, I I recently looked back at the beginning because in 2018 I tried posting some board game stuff but I was more like f- for fun and not really original content or anything but then uh, I s- think it all started when I like I was we were watching the the shut up and sit down live stream of Twilight Imperium 4 with no pun included uh, last year mm-hmm. and I tweeted about it with well, because we were watching it while play, playing uh, a game you don't like. <laughs> uh, terraforming Mars. <laughs> I don't mind terraforming. I like. Let's clear up the terraforming Mars thing, right? My entire thing about terraforming Mars is continuing to chip away at Stephen Bonacore until he finally just says, "Go ahead and review terraforming Mars," and oh. um, it's not happened yet. No matter how many kind of little times I copy him, I mean, yes, my let's face it, it's such a regular thing. It was like the last time I even kind of tweeted at Stephen Bonacore was basically like yesterday when I said, "Oh, look, here's some lovely little trays I've bought that you could put tokens in. Um, they're amazing. All I need to do now is to buy a copy of Terraforming Mars, kind of thing, and nothing." Never said a thing. Yeah. So I'm going to have to up the ante, basically. I mean, um, if you, like, uh, agree, if, like suggest the whole uh, legacy thing, maybe they have to send you stuff. But they sell, well, they sell these really cheap knockoff copies on eBay that come from kind of dubious sources. So I'm always tempted to just buy one of them and just <laughs> kind of let rip, basically basically on top of it anyway this is not about me um, <laughs> you're sitting there playing terraforming mars it normally is you're saying playing terraforming mars you're tweeting um while during. watching the the, yeah. the the live stream for the yeah. full eight hours like we we what? watched the full eight hours <laughs> like we cooked dinner in the meantime and and had it on in the back and we had it on for the full like eight hours they went on and i tweeted Dang. about it and they but eight they, hours yeah <laughs> wow, that's commitment in my hat. I doth, I doth my hat at the. Um, so you tweeted out, and you were getting responses, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I basically got retweeted by them, and then 
other people started liking and I was like, oh, okay, sure, I'll keep tweeting then about <laughs> this. And then I posted some <laughs> other things, but yeah. like the original thing, uh, first I posted my profile picture because I was on my way home uh, after work and I was like, oh, I kind of want to do uh, a profile picture. So I uh, had an idea for my profile picture and we I came home and I was like, oh, I want to do this. And uh, we set up a whole uh, photo set and he had like the, the softbox because he's really into photography. So I asked him for his help and I posted that. And because I, I didn't really feel comfortable in my skin back then because uh, I st uh, stopped wearing makeup. So I felt different than I uh -huh. normally was. I didn't wear that much makeup, but. It's a big, a big difference for me to see me, myself without mascara or with mascara. So I was like, oh, I want to kind of celebrate that. And the picture ended up really good. And I tweeted that out and it got over like over 300 likes. And I was like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of strange when stuff like that happens. And I mean, like it's not going, like your viral you like tweet, him? but... <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, but it's not. But it is weird when that kind of thing happens. Because occasionally, I I guess I'm lucky because kind of, cause we've got a reasonable number of followers that if I can put anything kind of stupid up, then people will go, yeah, this is, you know, I'll get averages of likes. But when you get that and you're just like, w there's two things that go through your head. It's like, this is pretty cool. And the second thing is, why are you doing this? Why are you all liking it? Yes, <laughs> why are exactly. you not liking my <laughs> other stuff? And then... <laughs> And you either go two ways. You'll kind of brush it off and go, "Okay, that's fine. That was that was that was a nice day," or you'll go, "Okay, what can I do next?" Which I can get some people liking it for, and and you know that and that can be. That's a very dark path. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then like around that time, Rodney came with the box flip, and I know I was like, "Hmm, why is no one?" Everyone is doing one or two boxes. Yes. And I saw uh, Kiki and Paula did their video about it, which was amazing. That was hilarious. Uh, <laughs> I laughed so hard. <laughs> and I was like, hmm, is there anyone going to be there doing a three box flip, like juggling boxes? And I I, 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 I grabbed the, the, the tripod and my phone and I set up like... I, I was sitting in front of the couch so if I would drop the boxes they would fall on a soft surface so they wouldn't get destroyed mm -hmm. even though they did get some battle damage during the day because I, I, I think I spent more how than how many an times hour. did you do it how many times did you do it? how many times was it more than three it was more than 30 I think wow I think I have like footage for maybe an hour maybe more did you take the stuff out? Did you take the stuff? I'm not. I'm not judging you. I am. I'm not judge. I'm definitely judging you. But did did you take the stuff out of the box or did you keep the stuff kind of in the box? I took the stuff out. I did. Did Rodney take the stuff out? I can't remember if Rodney. Do you know it's really I funny? I think he did. I think he did, didn't he? Yeah. Either that or he. That man is muscular. And he's got arms going on, which is pretty good. Um, yes. But the thing is, I remember I remember your box juggle because I remember everybody else was trying it. And then you were like standing there going, and there's three boxes. I was like, here we go. They're not going to be able to do that. And then I was like, <laughs> oh, my goodness. They actually did it. That's amazing. And that was it. I think that was your the beginning of your rise to ascendancy. Yes. To be perfectly to honest. To randomness. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a question, okay? Yes. As in, like, aren't they all just questions? But do you plan, because trying to be amusing is very, very difficult. <laughs> trying to be entertaining. <laughs> trying to be entertaining is very, very difficult, okay? Which is why after, you know, how many other episodes I've done, I can probably go, yeah, there's about maybe four or five times I think I've been funny. But do you, what come, do you just, do you just, do you plan ideas or do you just kind of go ahead and just say, well, let's on spur of the moment, is there a lot of spur of the moment stuff 
that just happens. Like, that you just I say, I'm, think... gonna, I'm just going to record <laughs> stuff or... Basically, that's it. Yeah, but like, <laughs> I never have had people call me amusing or funny or anything. So I never expected to be found that way by people online. So for me to have had such a response on the box flip was like, I he, what? What? <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> and then I thought like, oh, they're accepting my random IDs and. Normally, I would have those IDs and then do nothing with them. And now I start, if I have an ID, I try to execute it immediately mm-hmm. if I have the time. Yeah. So the GIF recreation thing that happened uh, for some reason is because I woke up and I thought, oh, you know, the the, the, the GIF with the, the little kid with the baseball cap on that is like, oh, shucks, uh, so, so cute. I was like, hmm. Okay, I want to try to make that. But then I was like, oh, I have a paired one scene. I really kind of want to throw in some crazy <laughs> recreations as well and fit them in together with two normal ones. And then I just spent the afternoon filming that and editing and then posting that. Because what I learned is that if I don't post it immediately, I would just keep tweaking and wait until it's perfect. And if you, <laughs> I that's like my, things that's to That's my perfect. attitude. That's my attitude to editing stuff in general yeah is that a lot <laughs> there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of written reviews that i've posted out there that kind of like <laughs> sometimes even kind of like two months later i'm going back in and saying nah well that sentence just reads completely <laughs> rubbish so i'll just go back in and i i have i it's very very difficult to um because you can be your own worst critic and sometimes you can be over editing and over analyzing stuff to the point where it loses the original purity of the idea. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, if, definitely. You know, if you and yet sometimes it's just the best thing to do is to kind of like just as you as you do, just take a, a kind of an idea and and run with it, which can sometimes work very well and sometimes doesn't. But that's that's the kind <laughs> of the that's the kind of the the nature of it. Um, do you feel under pressure to? You know, just yeah, gonna, gonna break it halfway through and just so I'm just gonna do um, a serious video now where I'm gonna read several chapters of Death of a Salesman. Thank you very much. Do you ever you kind of like I'm, I'm being serious kind of thing? But do you feel under pressure to kind of like now you've gone down this kind of journey to continue? kind of just producing little bits of snippets of content kind of but um more in a way because uh, i started a new project during the holidays and i haven't been posting as much on twitter itself in mm-hmm. the meantime but that's because i've been creating content that's supposed to come online at some point but tell me about this content <laughs> <laughs> Let me finish my uh, under pressure thing and then I'll tell you. (laughs) So I have felt like, oh, I haven't been posting as much. So I should Mm. post something because people will probably forget me if I won't post anything. So that's a little bit of pressure. I feel like if I, I am in, since I, since it started, I've been in some sort of flow. I had a lot of time to create the content and uh, uh, like space to make it. And now it's, less and i feel like uh how how can i f- still keep making things because i still have lots of ideas but how can i shape them into something that's easier for me to create at the moment and won't take as much time so that all formed in let's see the segue into the project i've been working on <laughs> which is uh it's see, i was just be putting a- you under pressure <laughs> that was all <laughs> that was all I'm going to start a podcast where it's basically uh, my Twitter, but then in a podcast format, hopefully. They're not allowed to do that. There's enough podcasts as it is. I know. I'm going to speak to the podcast police immediately. Um, and 911 you... podcast police. No? <laughs> what could be the, 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 the podcast number? Know. It's going to be... I don't know. Would there be a podcast, please? Everybody's allowed I, to make I a podcast. I think it should be like 909. Yes. Because 
Episode no nine nines sex. look like ears and the zero in between is then the head and then the nines are the headphones right, next okay. to it. All right, you clearly <laughs> really thought about this more than I have. What's the what's the message though in the podcast? What's it going to be about? What are you going to be doing? Is it just going to be a representation of what you've done on Twitter? It's going to be a whole bunch of craziness. So like the, the thing I've had in my bio since the beginning mm-hmm. that. It's just a whole bunch of craziness. So I've had, I've recorded five episodes so far, and the first three are more like interview style, basic, uh, basically, but playing off their uh, online presence brand name for some game or uh, questions about that, and just random questions, and it goes off into a whole another subject, and it's hard to follow, <laughs> I think, <laughs> so far. But I also had a, have a scripted episode already, and uh, one that's that was just a weird episode, and I haven't listened back to it yet. But I hope it's working out eventually. <laughs> and are you doing this with other people? Are you doing it yourself? Are you inviting guests on? Uh, I'm having guests on. So uh, each episode, so far, I have a new guest. I feel from, th- mostly I feel- from the board game industry. So. <clears throat> 909 hello <laughs> I feel threatened I feel I mean, utterly threatened I feel right I feel and this is honest truth right that you've come on here to talk about your content and you <laughs> sideswiped me to say oh look I'm also doing my own podcast I'm not happy I think um, I already told you about it I, I'm just doing it for dramatic Oh, right, reasons. sorry. Yeah, that's fine. That's what I totally did. I, 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 misbl- <laughs> I blinded you. I took advantage of you. And I'm going to spread my magical wisdom. <laughs> don't even use magic. How dare you come on here, talk about your podcast, and talk about magic of all places. I mean, yeah, you asked for it, right? <laughs> yeah, I totally do. I deserve it. It's been a long time coming, let's face it. Has, so, has no one in all the episodes you did? I, I'm gonna, just going to ask you a question. Is, right, okay. has no, no one ever brought up magic for some reason. All the time. I, yeah. Well, in fact, there's some guests for it. That's all. That's all they bring up is you know some people just say yes, yes they are, which is like you know it's meant to be funny at the time, but I do cry when people say that they're wizards. I mean that's just one of these things. Um. When are you going to no, release it? It's when are you going to get these episodes out there? Because that's six. That's quite a lot. It's it's fi- uh, It's going to come out next week. Oh, but okay. it's it's. I'm going to release with just the first episode and like a one minute teaser. Like this is the podcast going to be like, and then have uh, episodes out twice a month. So I have a I have a good buffer for recording. And putting the episodes up. You've got this all figured out, haven't you? Um, I mean, planned. the artwork is all done and the artwork is up and I've had I've installed everything. The only thing I need to do is like figure out the Apple podcast thing, but then I have to upload an episode first. Same for Spotify. Yes. So Yes. Spotify yeah. will get picked up. Should get picked up automatically depending on who you're hosting with. But yeah. Apple should be through. Well, you have to submit it to Apple. But you need a kind of a feed. It gets strange. And then I, I kind of look at Apple Podcasts and I wonder why I use Apple Podcasts. And then I realize it's still the biggest thing that people kind of use in order to find a show. Have you got a title for the show? Yes, definitely. You're not going to say, are you? <laughs> it's the Pointless Parrot Podcast. No. Because it's pointless. <laughs> That's brilliant. I hate it. And it's parrots. And I mean, since I started the idea this year, there's been over four people tagging me in parrot related content so i did my parrot branding well for some reason you've got artwork you've got a logo you've got a name yes i'm utterly utterly i even made my own jealousy intro jingle i just i just feel do you know what i feel like i feel like i was at my a game and then you've like appeared out of the shadows <laughs> no. and we've had we've had like a battle and then I thought it was okay and then just at the last minute you just turn around with a flurry of parrotness and then I've just fallen on my sword that's that's no. kind of how that's kind of how I feel a bit deflated 
But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> they're just short episodes, so they're nothing compared to your uh, show. I mean, I don't look. Is... I don't know. I'm. i Do you know what? There's nothing better than hearing other people actually. There's a big difference between sitting and talking about something and actually getting out and doing something. And anyone who gets out there and does something always has my respect from the outset because I know of so many people who will be sitting thinking about making something and then for whatever reason that doesn't happen so anybody that does I automatically I'm like yes do it get it done and get more stuff done because then it gets better and better as time goes on so that to me is absolutely fantastic um on a personal I really enjoy the content that you put out there I always find it (laughs) quirky (laughs) And quite funny and also a little ray of sunshine in this darkened world sometimes. You know, even just a little bit of randomness is there kind of make you you smile. Um, Thank you. Just kind of takes you out of things just for, even if it's a couple of minutes, even if it's 10 minutes, even if it's five minutes, it's always certainly stuff that kind of, it's cool. The the GIF stuff was, I thought was hilarious, to be perfectly honest. (laughs) Um... People are probably aware of you anyway, but if <laughs> they, <laughs> let's face it, I'm just, I'm kind of, I'm, you know, using your shoulders now to stand on. But if people want to um, find out more about you, where do you exist on the interweb nets? So my... Uh... The, the thing that I do the most random stuff on is my Twitter. I also post that stuff on Instagram. Mm-hmm. I've been doing... Oh, let me just... Uh, there's a balloon stuck in the station I have to come through every day now. And I decided to make That's a daily a <laughs> Instagram one. story of that. Because <laughs> it's stuck it's there. Ten- and it's like the teddy bear holding a heart saying, I love you this much. And it's all stuck on the, the highest ceiling there. And it's just like floating there. It's like ba- barely hanging off. wonder <laughs> if that was kind of... Somebody was given somebody else kind of flowers and chocolates. And then there was a little balloon. And, and the person went to grab for it and it just disappeared. Or was it a little child or somebody that was holding the balloon really happy and then it just floated away? Or was it... Somebody that turned around to somebody else and says, this balloon is not going to, this isn't going to save us. And they just let it go. There's so many stories. I, I, we we didn't, we'll never know. And I dread the day that, uh, the day is going to come someday that he's going to be gone. And then we'll never know what happens to him. Never, ever. You can maybe <laughs> do a podcast episode about it. Um, so, but know. yeah, the, the, that's at Mzaya. So that's... Uh, yeah, it, it, I, I, I pronounce it Dutch, so you'll probably find it somehow. And the podcast it's E-M, is... It's E-M-M-Z-A-J-A. There you go. Yes. There you go. <laughs> and that's Twitter and Instagram. Yes. Yes. And then the, the podcast is going to be the Pointless Spirit podcast, hopefully. And that's also... It's the, the social channels are already up, but I didn't post anything yet. So, so what, what we'll do is we will um, we'll put our links in the show notes so that we have got notes to show. Simple. Yes. As show the notes. That. There you go. Um, oh, you could do. Oh, you could do like uh, just the, the if you release an episode on April first, make the show <laughs> notes all musical notes. <laughs> you just ruined it now. I could have oh, done that. <laughs> I mean, then you have to release this episode happen. after April first. <laughs> and I have to leave it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but what we'll do, as I say, we'll make sure that everybody is very, 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 very much aware. Um, if you like what you've uh, listened to tonight, there's a couple of ways you can support us. You can um, support us through Patreon. Um, you can go and visit our blog. You can go and visit our Twitter, our Instagram, our Facebook. Uh, whatever you feel is necessary or pointless. It's entirely up to yourself. <laughs> um, you can always go into Apple Podcasts or your podcast catcher of choice and leave us a rating or a review. If you are going to be leaving us a rating or a review, don't give us 10 stars because it makes us big-headed. But don't give us one because it makes us cry. 
give us something in the middle, like a five, because it's average, and we're just a little bit average. But the person who has um, not been average is rather wonderful, rather fantastic, Emma. Thank you very much for coming on. (laughs) Thank you for having me. You're welcome. You're very welcome. Go, 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 go. Thank (laughs) you very much. Don't. (laughs) 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 Don't. (laughs) Don't? Yeah, no, dude, it's fine. It's fine. Um, You can always edit it out, right? (laughs) The most important question is, remember, we are many things, but we're not parrots. Are we parrots, Emma? Maybe I am. I thought so. But that's that's the mystery. It's a leading question, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And the next thing next thing to do is to say goodbye. <laughs> so, it's goodbye from Emma. Say goodbye. Goodbye. Say goodbye. <laughs> yeah, say goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> it's a, and it's a goodbye from me. <laughs> but until the next time, this has just descended into... It's a cracker. Into absolute Go chaos. Go pick it <laughs> Until the next time, goodbye. A wizard is never late. Nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. (laughs) 